I ran around all morning picking up all the parts that I needed to get this job done. I made sure the battery bank was at 100%. Um, it's time to do it, one array at a time. So these nine panels need to come down. What I'm gonna do is take them down, put them in the back of the side-by-side, -side, strap them down, drive them down to the house, then Cedar and the kids are gonna help me clean them really, really well first. Once they're all cleaned up, we're then gonna start the process of moving them up on the roof. But before I can get them on the roof, I need to put the racking system in place that I'm gonna uh, do this out of. Again, I've, I've thought about this just about every which way that I can. I feel confident that what's in my head will work if I can get it on the roof. Um, I first need to disconnect all of these solar panels. They're not under load necessarily. The sun is not, not directly overhead. Uh, so I need to be a little bit careful uh, hook, unhooking them. Uh, but that's it, it's time to do it. So step one is to get them all unhooked. That's it. Sometimes when you pull those things apart under load, it will arc. I really didn't want that to happen. So that's it, this array is down. Now I need to get them all individually unhooked. I've spent a tremendous amount of time researching what my options really are when it comes to adjustable solar panel mounts for a roof. And while there are some out there, they're either too lightweight or they don't provide the angles that I need or they're just flat too expensive. So I'm hoping what I have in my head will be perfect for our situation. For the last three and a half years, these solar panels have sat right here, connected to the ground mounts that I made out of some old well casing that I got down at the local scrapyard. And other than the fact that I hate looking out our master bedroom window and seeing the back of our solar panels, this adjustable ground mount system has worked perfectly for our needs. No, I'm over. I gotta because now I gotta get this one on the roof and get it charging. The, I can't take them all down at once. Oh, yeah, true. So, um. I'm a bit nervous about the next step in this process. I'm going out of my way to make sure everything is as heavy duty as it can be when it comes to the new adjustable mounts that will be on my brand new metal roof. And I feel like I've done my homework and everything is going to work out perfectly, but I'm still nervous. One of the other factors in our equation comes down to the availability of parts. Over the last six to eight months, 
I've gone back and forth on which mounting brackets will be best. And after finding what I think will work, I then find out they either don't have enough of them or it's gonna be six months before they're back in stock. Since we caught the raccoon, we haven't lost any more chickens. <laughs> chickens! <Is that> chickens! <laughs> I forgot what I was gonna say. That's what happens when the camera comes on. <laughs> Since we caught the raccoon a couple weeks ago, we haven't lost any more chickens. But I do wanna keep my chickens safe and I wanna keep them just in the fenced yard. And so we're gonna have to clip one side of their wings so they'll stop flying over the fence and they'll just stay close by. I love that they wander around, but I hate when they poop on the porch and I hate when you find poop everywhere. So I do like them contained in our, our yard. So we're just gonna wing it. We're just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna wing it. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, the chickens always know it's when I bring out this white thing, that it's snack time. So Supper time. We're gonna get them into the coop and then one by one just pull them out and clip them as we go. Can I just grab them? <laughs> <laughs> kind of put their head like this. Chill. When their wings are cut like this, it just kind of puts them off balance. So, that's it. And then, so the ones that we cut, we'll just put outside. <laughs> we had an escapee. Screaming, by the way. Seven ten. plus three mamas. That's only ten. Ten cats? I didn't want three. <laughs> you didn't want one cat. Let alone ten. And now you're a sucker for I them. like them. They do their job. They most certainly do their job. Mm -hmm. uh, Willow is the best mouser I've ever seen, but uh, no, it's time for somebody else to uh, enjoy our little kittens. Mm -hmm. I told you this when we first moved to this area that I'd never seen a place where there were probably four cats to every person that lived in our town. Everywhere you drive, every farm you drive around, there's 11 cats. So the answer is three's plenty. <laughs> three's plenty. Yeah. Well, we found homes for a few of them, but we're still working on homes for the other ones. Callie, tell me about your experience trimming the chicken's wings. Have you, have you recovered? No, that's um, why we're sitting here. That was pretty traumatic, huh? <laughs> yeah. You learn what it's like to be a chicken farmer? Um, somebody anonymously sent you, well, sent a chair to our to oldest Sage. daughter Sage's house. And Sage had her boyfriend uh, put the chair together, mm -hmm. and then they brought it up here for your birthday. Yep. And the truth is, I like that chair better than these. <laughs> these things have become, maybe I got too many miles, too many, uh, look at, you can see the, I got too many AD, ADD uh, <laughs> rocking on the. This one's mine, so huh? touch. This one's mine. All right. This is the adjustable roof mount bracket that I'm gonna to use to mount the Unistrut to the roof of our house and then in turn use the Unistrut to mount the uh, solar panels to. Here's the problem. It's obviously adjustable. It moves, it's supposed to fit anywhere from I think inch and a quarter, inch and a half, uh, our panel to much wider. This is a piece of our roof. If I adjust it all the way down, it doesn't fit right. So I nearly sent these back trying to find the right one that fits these panels right. Everything is six months out. 
nobody has anything in stock. Matter of fact, I found a better one that I like better that actually fit better, but they're six months out. So I've been thinking about this. I've been trying to figure out how I can make this work. Eighth inch flat stock aluminum, uh, three inches wide. I am gonna try to make basically a spacer that's gonna go over the top of this and I have to bend it to fit perfectly. And if I do this right, it should create the gap that that bracket needs and it should also create some stability. But it's gonna take me a second to figure this out, I think. Initially, I lightly scored the back of the aluminum flat stock, knowing that that would help in the bending process, but it would often crack along that score mark. And about that time, I remembered I actually owned a small sheet metal brake. You know, someday I'm gonna get organized and I'll remember what tools I have. As I was diving into this, I remembered I had a sheet metal break up on the hill. Um, I brought it down here. The aluminum keeps getting close to cracking and in some cases cracking, so I can heat it up if I need to. I'll drag the torches out here and heat it up. I'd rather not though. And I can see that it's gonna work. If I can get this little pattern figured out, if I can get a little jig going to where I can, um, uh, do this fast. I need to make 20 of them. So uh, I'm going to keep playing around with this and see if I can get it figured out. Using the sheet metal brake, I didn't have to cut the back of the aluminum to get it to bend properly. I still needed to be a little bit careful during the process, but I was actually able to get all of the angles that I needed to. I would eventually make a little jig that would ensure that I was getting the angles exactly right. The best case scenario is that the new adjustable roof mounts last a very, very, very long time. And I have to get up there a couple times of year to change the angle of the panels as the sun moves up and down in the sky. Okay, that's the goal right there. I have to make 20 of these. I have to make 20 of these aluminum pieces. But the worst case scenario is that it not only doesn't work, but that I damage the roof in the process. And this is not something that I want to happen, obviously. I've looked at just about every option out there that I can find. And for our situation, this seems to be not only one of the most stable ways to mount the solar panels up there, but it should hold up to just about whatever weather comes at it as well. The angle that the solar panels will sit at in the middle of the winter time will likely hold a little bit of snow behind it. But if I do my job right, it really shouldn't matter.
playing prison rules then? No, that wasn't prison rules. Thank you. You're not winning like that. Thank you. Is this Russian basketball or what? In Russia, they don't dribble. All day long. That's why you. That's why you gotta learn to be sneaky, like Steph Curry. Good job, buddy. Two games in a row, that's crazy. There is definitely a little bit of trial and error going on during the process, but the second I run that first screw down into the roof, wherever I position that mount, that's where it's gonna stay. For this reason, I'm doing a lot of measuring, making sure I can get all the solar panels on the roof. Do you want me to tell you which ones? Come here, Cass. Oh. You gotta like pull down at the root like this. Just like all pull of them? down so it doesn't break off. Just all yep. of them? Yep. Like that? As a father of five, the last thing that I want to do is raise kids that are interested in participation ribbons. That being said, I also want my kids to understand the importance of winning gracefully and losing gracefully, especially with my son, Reed. He is incredibly competitive, and he has some God-given talent that will be fun to watch as he grows up. So, it's wet, so it's really wet. wet? uh-oh. You have to put it in the sun to dry it. You excited to eat carrots for dinner for the next two weeks? Yeah. Can I have one? After we wash it, yes. Can I, can I just like... You want to get dirt stuck in your teeth? Let's just see what comes off. I think sometimes you have to use a harsh cleaner to get... It. Okay, you on this side. Let's just put them on there. As we're rapidly approaching the end of our gardening season, our little garden here has done surprisingly well. We are waiting on the tomatoes to turn, and I can't wait for some of Cedar's fresh salsa. Cedar just pointed out that there's a pretty good chance of rain starting this evening going into the morning. So I'm gonna stop for a brief second and see if I can't get these special uh, roof jacks that I've been waiting to put on. I, I got up on the roof a few days ago thinking it would be way less um, slick. And it was, I don't know if there's just a little film of dust on it. It was so crazy slick and I was pulling on the strap so hard I was afraid that the, that the strap wasn't anchored well enough and so I got down. So I'm gonna verify that the strap is good. I'm gonna get up there and do these um, um, these flashings, hopefully real quick before it starts raining. These are the flashings that I'm gonna use on the roof. Main reason I'm using these is because they're designed to work with a metal roof. They're flexible, they move around. Uh, the smaller ones, I think they're around $20, $25 a piece. This big one wasn't cheap, this is for the chimney. Cost me $100 for that thing. Um, I'm hoping it slips right over. I'm gonna might have to get a little bit creative, but this is really the last thing. This and a, a real good urethane uh, caulking, and that should be the icing on the cake.
Growing up with my four brothers, playing basketball was what we did. The one goal that I had until I was in my late teens was to be as good or better than my older brothers. There were many times that the game ended with one of us crying, probably me, because it was physical basketball or because I was tired of losing. But along the way, I learned the value in hard work and the feeling that comes with winning as well as the feeling that comes with losing and how to do both those things in a way where ultimately everybody wins. If all goes well, by this coming Wednesday's video, I will have a good portion of the solar panels moved up on the roof, but we will see. So the little aluminum plates that I made are really gonna come into play here. The idea behind these brackets is that they screw to the ribs and they screw into the ribs and not down in the roof. What I'm gonna do with the bracket is I'm gonna put a screw in every corner going down in the roof. That way there's just no way these things are gonna come loose or move around. I'm even gonna put a, a bead of urethane uh, caulking underneath it again just to try and maintain everything. But let me give you a visual here on how this is gonna go down. Something to that effect and then this bolt goes up through the hole in the unistrut. Two screws through the aluminum foot plate on both sides, then two screws on the foot plate going down into the roof. Then I'm gonna have a hinge that I'm gonna bolt to the unistrut. And this hinge is a greasable galvanized hinge that's rated at, I think at around 300 pounds. And then the upper flange will be attached to another piece of unistrut, which will support the solar panel so I can move it up and down as I need to. This is a little bit of, of trial and error, and what I see in my head is sometimes hard to put into words, but it should be super stable more than anything because each one of those uh, arrays, again, weighs somewhere around 650 pounds, and I need to know that doing this and doing this the way that I'm doing it is going to hold up and last a long time, and I, and I really feel confident that it will. Too. Oh, that one's big. Look at this. It's a really muddy area. Are you so excited to eat carrots tonight? No. No? Not yeah. your favorite? Little one. Well, there, that little one could be I for mean, you. I won't be excited about carrots. Oh. <laughs> Even cooked carrots? Yeah. 